Hello everyone, I'm Dave Thomas and today I am building the Lock Precision Cool Spool. And as you can see in the illustration here, it is a flying spool. Um, it is stable, it's not very aerodynamic, but it does fly. And so this, even though it looks kind of weird here, <clears throat> this kit goes together fairly quickly. Alright, so let's go ahead and find all our parts here. And we should have a parts list. There we go. Okay, so we've got two end plates here. These look more like plumbing supplies. Alright, a plastic body tube. Alright, a spacer tube, that's what this is. motor mount All right, and then we have several decals here two for the end pieces and then one that wraps around the body okay a very large engine clip alright we've got a nylon parachute Also a nylon shock cord. All right, and then we've got two rings here. All right, these are centering rings for the body tube there. So it looks like we have everything we need and we will go ahead and get started. Now the instructions for this are pretty brief and obviously assume that you've already had some experience uh, building model rockets and it's also a mid-power rocket so this uses a 29 millimeter uh, engine tube and again um, generally we expect that if you're going to be flying bigger engines that you've already had some experience with that. That aside though, this builds fairly easily and quickly. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we're going to glue the body tube onto one of the end plates. And we're just going to set the other end plate aside for now. And I am going to dry fit this first. Okay, make sure everything works so the this piece actually fits inside the body tube. We've got a little bit of excess plastic in there. You might want to just chip that away. Okay. Um, everything here can be done with plastic model cement. And so for this first piece, I'm going to use some tube type plastic model cement here. And I'm just going to run a bead, not too heavy, but even, all the way around the inside of this tube. And then I'm simply going to put that back down on top. All right, give it a little twist back and forth to get good glue spreading and adhesion. Once we have the body tube in place, we can install the decal on this face. And <clears throat> we want to line this up so this near full hole, not the little half hole there, but the full hole on this side, that should line up with this little tick mark and become the nose of the alien here. So about like that. All right, and if you're not completely on center, that's not a big deal. All right, go ahead and smooth that down, get the air bubbles out. And then take your hobby knife here and just cut out the overlapping decal. Okay, and then we'll just set this whole thing aside to allow it to finish drying and go on to work on the motor okay, mount. Okay, now the next part here is assembling the motor mount and notice it doesn't give us any type of dimensions, uh, spacing between the rings or things like that. And also the kit comes with this motor retention clip 
but does not show it being used anywhere here in the instructions. Okay, so we may need to do a little bit of experimentation here. Um, the other thing that is going to go together at this point is attaching the shock cord to the motor mount here. And this is really common with Kevlar shock cords, but this does not look like Kevlar. This looks like nylon. And I think I'm actually going to substitute mine out for Kevlar. Uh, if you don't have your own Kevlar shock cord, go ahead and use this one. Alright, and I'm just going to measure this quickly. And it looks to be just under 4 feet long. So here I'm going to use some 350 pound test Kevlar, which is more than heavy enough. You could use uh, even 200 pound here, but this I've got handy. And the rule of thumb is to have at least three times the rocket length in a non-elastic shock cord. And four feet is more than enough for that. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the original shock cord as a guide. And then go ahead and cut this off. And again, if you don't have the Kevlar, just use the one that came. Alright, and now I'm going to set that aside for just a moment. While we see what we want to do with the motor mount here. Okay, so we need to assemble the rings. And this is really tight. So you may have to take your fingernail or something and chamfer out the rings here, like this. All right, and just really stretch that. There we go. Okay, so that those centering rings are really, really tight. All right, I'm going to put on the other one here. Okay, so just by eyeballing this, if I assume this is my aft end, and I'm going to go ahead and write that on here so I don't get confused later. Okay, so the illustration would look something like that. Alright, and then if we were to place this against it, something like that. Now this does not have an engine block or anything in it, so it's assuming that we're using mid-power motors that have an aft engine block. Okay, so I'm going to use this. This is a, a reloadable motor casing, uh, 29 millimeter, and so I can kind of use this to guess where I need to put in. So if I'm actually going to use this clip, for motor retention, then it needs to go about there. All right, and then it's going to need a little slot here, right about there. Okay, still no glue on anything yet, and I'm going to go ahead and cut a slit right there. Now an alternative could be that you would use um, a screw-on retainer, but that's going to add a lot of mass to the, the aft end and could make this unstable, so I'm not going to do that. Although you, if you have a simulation program, you can run that and see if it is stable with it. Longer slit there. There we go, finally. Okay. 
So I would bring that down. And then here, um, in order to get this back on, I'm going to have to cut a notch in it. First, I just want to put my motor casing back in here. All right, there we go. Okay, it looks like it was catching on there. So if I turn this now, yep, now it's fitting properly. Okay. So we can do that. Um, I'm going to also try this with a, a disposable motor. So here I have a couple of spent motor casings from disposable motors here. So this is a, a G motor and that fits okay. Alright, if we put an F in there, that also fits okay. Alright, so we can go with that and see if I can move this centering ring up. It doesn't want to go, so we're going to have to cut a little notch in that as well. So I'm going to cut two notches in my centering rings that will allow them to fit over the uh, clip there. Now, if you don't want to worry about the clip, you can just leave this off and use masking tape to hold the motor in place. I'm just going to take the clip here and use it as a cutting guide. All right, so on the inside of my centering rings here, I'll just draw where I need that. Okay, now I do want to be careful not to cut all the way through. About half the thickness of the ring should do it. And then I'll go ahead and mark the other one in the same way. put my clip back in, slide this over. I'm going to do both of them from the front end now. All right, there we go, and that moves right over there. Okay, and now I'm going to come back and try to estimate approximately where that actually is. So I'm going to say it's somewhere about there. I'm going to go ahead and just mark that so when I come back to glue it, I know where it is. Okay, now we'll cut out the other ring. And now this one, I'm going to also slip on from the front. Okay, and this is just going to go right over forward part of that clip. Now we're also going to tie the shock cord on around this and that's going to require us to cut another notch in the uh, centering ring there, although I want to glue this in place before I do that. But the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to put this inside this heavy sleeve. Okay, so that will go in like this. Okay, and then um, they just say position the motor tube to desirable exposure. And so judging by this, I'm guessing that's a right around here. Um, and that's also where this little bend in my clip goes. So I think that's probably a good place for it. And then this is going to come through the forward end. Whoops and rest down here. Okay, so I need to pull that back a bit more. So I can just pull back on that. All right, and that's going to give me a bit more exposure. Okay, so it's going to end up being about like that. So first thing I'm going to do before I do more stuff here is go ahead and glue these rings in place and let them dry. For the centering rings, I'm going to use wood glue to put them in place. You could also use white glue for this. And here I'm moving them off of their areas here. So both of them I've just moved to the aft a little bit. And now I'm just going to put an even bead of glue around this. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm going to push that back up into its place and into the glue. Now, with as tight as this is, it's probably going to bind as soon as that hits that glue, so work quickly. Give yourself some room there. Okay, and then the excess glue, just take your finger and form that into a fillet. And if you have more excess, go ahead and do it on the back side. All right, in fact, I am going to go ahead and place a fillet all the way around so I didn't have enough glue on my finger yet. But this can be used with some fairly high thrust motors, so we don't want flimsy motor mounts. Right, and then wipe any excess off that you get on the ring itself. Okay, and if your ring is a little bit slanted or something like that, it's not going to make a whole lot of difference. Don't worry about it. Try and get it as perpendicular as you can. All right, and now I'm doing, going to do the same thing with the aft ring. Also, now push that back up to my marked position. Alright, and then we can put that in. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put a fillet on the opposite side as well. It's not going to hurt anything if you get some glue on the retention clip there because it's not going to stick very well anyway. All right, and now I'm going to let that completely dry before we go to stick it into the um, a spacer tube there. While I'm waiting for the motor mount rings to dry, we can go ahead and apply the decal on the other plate here. Now on this one it goes on the outside, so this surface will be the topmost. And like we did with the base, the nose of the alien is going to line up with the hole there, and that will become our launch lug. This one's actually a little bit easier to line up because there's less space. It's right about there. And then go ahead and cut out the decal around the hole. I think my knife's getting a little bit dull. There we go. Okay, and then we'll set that aside for the moment. All right. Now we can also continue with the last decal. Um, the instructions show doing all this after you've got everything assembled. However, uh, this is actually going to be easier to do if we don't have that top plate in place. Okay, so this is going to go right around the body tube. And here I'm actually going to give myself a guideline. So if you've got a line drawing guide or a piece of angle aluminum like this. Um, you can just set that against here and oh, lo and behold. Alright, on mine, this looks like a fabrication line. There actually is a line in the plastic here. Now if yours doesn't have that by chance, um, go ahead and make one for yourself here. So you can just take a, a marker or a pencil here. It doesn't need to be a really prominent line, just a straight line that you can see. And this will be able to allow us to line up the decal straight on the tube. Okay, so this is going to go like this. And here I'm just going to peel off part of the backing to begin with, so I don't have to worry about it trying to stick to everything. Right, so I'm just going to crease that there. 
And now I'm going to use that line as a guide at the edge of my decal here. And just lightly tack that down. Okay, and now I can peel off the back. And this should lay down pretty straight. Okay, it is off just a little tiny bit. So you're able to pull this up and just kind of put a little bit of tension on toward whichever end you need. Now if it's really off, you'll need to pick it up and try again. I'm still off just a little hair on the angle there, so I've got a little bit of excess decal. However, um, I can either trim that with a hobby knife, or when I go to glue this on, it will probably not make a whole lot of difference. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and trim it here, and so you can just take your hobby knife, I'm just going to use that to shave it off. We can go ahead and trim that right up. Isn't that nice and easy there? It's amazing what a sharp blade will do. <clears throat> okay, and then once you've got that in place, you can just go through with your fingers and smooth this out get all any of the bubbles out of it here. All right. And since this is a vinyl decal, um, or at least a non-paper one, yeah, if you have to, you can pick this whole thing back up and reposition it. My motor mount glue is still drying, and so one of the other things we can do is prep the parachute for installation. Now, I'm not quite sure why they have such thick shroud lines on a parachute that's really not that big, but they do, and we can work with it. Right, so go ahead and open this up, and even though it's a circle, it's still basically a hexagon here, so we've got three sets of shroud lines that we're going to gather together. Okay. And then I'm going to find the center of the parachute, which is how it was folded. All right, pull all the lines together, and those edges should be nice and flush with each other, which they are. They did a really good job on making sure the shroud lines were taut. Now here, we have two ways to, to do this. The way they show here is to take all of our loops all right, and gather those and make a water knot or fisherman's knot here. So you're just going to tie one big knot in it, and we're still going to have the loops there. Okay, and then the shock cord will just tie through that as another loop. And then that's all there is to it. You fold this up, you stuff it in the top, there's no nose cone or anything. <clears throat> Alright, now those of you who've seen my other rocketry videos know that I like to use snap swivels when I can. And so in this case, with this really heavy shroud line, um, this may be a bit more of a problem. But we will check. So the use of a snap swivel allows the parachute to easily be changed out if you need to put on a larger one or a smaller one, or maybe you burn the chute. Um, and then having the swivel in it, also helps release torsional stress if the parachute starts winding up on itself. Okay, now in this case, if you want to do this, you're going to need to get a snap swivel um, that has a large enough eyelet here on the swivel side to allow all of those loops to go through. And this is going to be pretty tight. I think I can just do it with this one. And we may have to just pull one or two at a time and then grab the next ones here. There's two. And to 
get that third one through there. Which, if we can get it through, tight is fine. I'm going to try using a pencil tip here. There we go. Push that through. Alright, now, since I've been kind of doing these individually, I'm going to gather them all up on my finger once more. Alright, and now the snap swivel is just hanging there. Alright, and we're Check the length of my shroud lines once more. Make sure they're even on this side of the parachute. Okay, now what I do is pass the entire snap swivel through there. Right, bring all of the loops down. And now I'm going to carefully pull this taut. Okay, so now we have all the loops, they form a knot around there. Now, with as big as these are, I really don't have to do anything else. With smaller shroud lines, I would put a little dab of glue on there to kind of lock them in place. But these are pretty much self-locking at this point. An alternative to this um, is to, you could also just use a swivel without the snap attachment and just tie in the uh, shock cord to the other side of the swivel. Now if you do that, um, you won't be able to quickly change things, but you will still get the ability to unwind the chute with the swivel in there. Okay. But then this can be tied into the loop from the shock cord. You just put the loop over that, clip it back up, and it's ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this aside now as we continue to wait for glue to dry. Now that the centering rings have dried, we need to apply the shock cord. And whether you're using the Kevlar or the nylon one that came with the kit, um, the procedure is going to be the same. So this is going to wrap around just below the forward centering ring and we'll glue that in place. And so we're going to put a notch in that centering ring here so that it doesn't cause a bulge in the um, mount that could interfere with mounting this into the sleeve. So the first thing I'm going to do here is on the side opposite the clip here, because we don't want to weaken that side anymore, uh, I'm just going to cut a notch And here, even if you accidentally cut all the way down to the tube, since it's all glued into place, that's not going to be a big deal. Alright, so now I'm just going to take and make a loop here, just using a, a single overhand knot to begin with. And we want this big enough to fit over the centering ring. Okay. And I'm going to tie this. Now this doesn't need to have a big free end here, nor does it have to have a fancy knot. Because what I'm going to do next is simply glue this all the way around. So using your wood glue or white glue. Here we go. Alright. So here I'm just going to run a bead of glue around this and embed the shock cord in the glue. Okay. So just kind of give yourself some room here. All right. Smooth that all in. And again, don't get uh, excess on the actual ring surface there. And then make sure you keep the long end of the shock cord going through that notch. Right, and then 
once more remove any excess glue from the centering rings. Okay, and now we're going to let this dry. Uh, and then make sure, to, like, my free end there was kind of sticking up, so make sure all this is plastered down against the body tube, or the motor tube there. And then once again, we're going to let this dry. Alright, now I've got my engine mount ready to be mounted inside the sleeve. And so here, once again, we're going to do a test fit first. All right, make sure that it slides over both of our centering rings there. All right, I'm going to pull this out. And now I'm going to recheck the size on this. So, I'm going to put this down through. All right, and the main thing I want to be sure of is that we're not blocking this. So I'm going to put my engine hook over here at the hole that's only um, basically a half hole there. That gives us room here for the engine hook to move. Okay, and that gives us enough clearance there um, to work with the engine. So I like that. Everything's good. So here I'm going to take this back out. All right, and I'm going to mark it where my sleeve is. Okay, and then I'm going to push this back. Okay, so um, just to make sure I'm going the right way here, I'm going to put aft on this so I don't confuse myself later. Alright, and now I'm going to use an applicator here to apply the glue. I'm using the wood glue again for this. You can use white glue. Alright, but now if I line this up so that my line is there at the edge, then that centering ring is going to be where my finger is. And I want to put the glue just a little bit above that, so I'm going to measure about there. Alright, and then use my thumb here as a guide. Right, I'll measure that again as I just move my thumb. Yep, that's a good place. Okay, so now I'm just going to put this in and then rotate it around the inside there using my thumb as a guide. And it looks like I'm going to need some more. Because okay, so I don't want this coming loose. And now I can use the previous layer of glue there as a guide. Alright, so down inside there you can see the glue. So now I'm going to put this back in. Alright, now for the other ring there, I'm going to apply glue as well. And it's going to be kind of hard to get down inside there, so on this one, I'm going to apply the glue to the ring itself, kind of on its forward edge. push that in and we don't want to hesitate here so the glue does not get stuck All right, and, oops, pull that back to where it needs to be there we go and remove any glue from the engine clip there Okay, up here on top, just need to clear any glue away. Alright, so it should look like that. So now I have my shock cord coming up opposite the engine hook down there. And now when I put this into the tube of the spool itself, all right, I'm going to rotate that around so it looks like that. Okay. And they actually don't show gluing the um, top of the spool on, or excuse me, gluing the sleeve into the t 
tube. Instead, this is going to be held in place by the upper plate here. So if I pass my shock cord through that plate, Okay, and then stand this up. Right. When this is glued into place, that's going to keep the motor mount from coming loose. Now if you do want to glue this in, um, I would suggest using epoxy or some uh, thick super glue. But keep in mind, especially with epoxy, that may change the weight distribution a little bit, which could affect the aerodynamics. All right, the other thing we're going to need to do now is align the launch lugs. All right, so here's our launch lugs are these holes here. Uh, and they show using a launch rod to do this. I'm going to start by just sighting down through it. All right, but in my case also, all right, the edge of my decal here is actually really close to the half holes in my plate. And so if I move that, okay, so that we have I have the same amount of space between the edge of the hole and the edge of the decal there, that's going to get me really close. Alright. Now if your decal edge is over somewhere else, you may or may not be able to use that particular trick. Right, but here I can now sight through the half holes and they're aligned. Right, and through the main ones they're also aligned. Uh, if you need to you can use a dowel or a launch rod. Right, so here I've got a dowel. Just make sure your dowel isn't warped. All right, but if that's all parallel, and it is, then those are in alignment. Right, I still haven't glued it yet, and I need to do that. So I'm going to now take my shock cord for the moment and just wrap this up. And stuff it down inside the motor sleeve. So that it's out of the way. Okay, now get that all the way down. And now I'm going to put in a bead of plastic cement just like we did with the other one. So here let's go ahead and put this all the way around. And I'm going to use a fairly heavy bead for this since it is holding everything in. Once again, I'm going to line up things as best I can before I shove that in and make it permanent. Because once this goes in, it's going to be hard to get it back out again. Alright. So again, I'm going to use my decal line there. Alright, and I'm going to push that in. And now very quickly check my alignment once more that looks good and siding down it also looks good alright so now I'm just going to give that an extra squeeze there to make sure it's seated well okay and now I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes but we're almost done okay so here I've pulled the shock cord back out of the spool Okay, now, if you are tying this directly to your parachute, go ahead and stick this through the three loops at the end, and then tie that on with a couple of half hitches or a double knot. If you did the screw or the uh, snap swivel like I did, what you'll want to do is make a loop here at the end. All right, so just gather up a loop, tie an overhand knot in that also called a fisherman's knot or a water knot. Okay, just like that. And then I like to put a little dot of super glue 
on the knot and on the free end there. All right, you want to use the runny type for this, but just a little dab and let that soak in. And this will just keep that knot from coming undone. Okay, and then you can just wipe off the excess there. Okay, so here I'm going to snap in my snap swivel. that on. Okay, so now we have shock cord to the parachute. Okay, and then all we do is fold everything together and stuff it down inside there. So there's no nose cone or anything like that. So here I'm going to gather my parachute into kind of a triangle like this. All right, and I'm going to fold it kind of the way I would if, it, if I was doing this with a nose cone. All right, so I'm going to tuck up the shroud lines there and then kind of fold that down into a little pouch like that. All right, I can take the shock cord and gather it up. And here, I'm going to go ahead and put a motor in, just so we can see how much room we've got. There we go. All right, so you can look down inside there. Now, if you're prepping this for launch, you would actually want to put some wadding in there, or get yourself some reusable wadding, like a Nomex sheet. Right, but for now, I'm just going to take my shock cord, put that down inside, All right. and it is going to be kind of cramped in there. All right, and I'm going to follow that with my parachute, All right, and it just gets stuffed down like that. Okay, so my cool spool is completely finished here. Um, I would give it a good half an hour before you actually launch it and let the plastic cement completely cure. All right. But this is, this is an interesting rocket. I'm looking forward to seeing how it flies. Hope you had as much fun building this kit as I did. And have a great launch and a safe recovery. And don't forget, check out my other videos on this channel.